This is the Wally Y150, and it follows on from the Y200. The idea being to condense that amazing formula down to a sub 24 meter footprint. So that means you still got that amazing full length top deck, main deck owner's cabin, and one of the most spectacular interiors you're likely to see. It's also triple IPS. We've got a full tour of it, so let's get going. I'm Jack Haynes, welcome to Yacht Buyer. Let's get into this main deck then, because it is something special. Starting back here, this platform drops down into the water. This is where you carry the tender. Obviously it drops down, tender floats off, and then you can see steps are revealed as it drops down so you can easily go up into the cockpit, which I will do now. And then you have the seating area back here. These have got two-way backrests on them, these seats, so you can flip them this way and face out over the water, or you can have them the way they are now so that you can see into the saloon. The side door over on this side, so if you're side two at a fuel pontoon or a high key, you have got door access there if you want. But really, what it's all about is this incredible connection on this main deck between these two areas. First of all, just look at the size of this door, look at the height of it, look at the width of it, it's absolutely huge, completely flat threshold. Obviously you've got these grates here so water can drain off if you do take a wave over the back, but it's just extraordinary to enter the boat through this massive aperture. Over on this side you have a day head with the all-important carbon fibre toilet but that's actually really well located near the aft end of the boat, near the flybridge when people come down so they can get into there really easily during the day. And this obviously is your internal dining space, but it also sort of works as your external dining space because it is so close to that threshold and the connection is so good. It's a wide body design. You've got 22 feet of beam on this thing and this area pushes all the way to the edge of it. And you've got these double height windows as well. So the amount of natural light in, the view out, absolutely extraordinary for this size of boat. There's over eight feet of headroom in this area. I love the way that wooden panelling sort of curves up with the movement of the deck. It does look absolutely fantastic. Television is mounted in here and it's double-sided. So you have a screen facing this way so you can watch it from out there. And you've got a screen on this side as well so you can watch it from the sofas up there. Then you have this wonderful mezzanine space as well. This is slightly elevated, looking down over the dining space. Again, because of that double height window, you still have those amazing views out over the water. But for me, it's all about this position here. Sitting down on this sofa with that view. Look at that vista. It's just absolutely amazing. That is what it's all about. Imagine this out at sea, not in the confines of a boat show. It really is the money shot, that. That is a lovely place to sit on a nice cool evening, looking out over the back of the boat. Just awesome. Moving forward this way, on the port side, you have the galley. Now you can have this open plan. You can remove this bulkhead, so this has a better connection to that area. On a crewed boat, you probably do want it closed off a bit so you can have some privacy from crew and they have access to their crew quarters down there. We'll look at that later on. But yeah, in this guise, you've got this nice U-shaped galley, big domestic fridge freezer. All your cooking is over this side, hob over this side. Again, decent view out. You've still got a nice bit of window line here. You notice how well the windows align with the internal spaces. On the lower deck, on this deck, there's always a view out, there's always good natural light. Talking of views out, let's carry on forward. Access down this stairway to the lower deck, we'll go and look at the guest cabins in a moment, but this is pretty special. I can't remember the last time I saw a hallway this big on a boat much bigger than this, never mind this size. This is all storage down here. This is all wardrobe storage leading forward to the owner's cabin. We'll stop for a second there and check out this owner's ensuite. Spectacular. Look at the size of it. Again, headroom, extraordinary. Twin sinks, enormous shower cubicle with a built-in seat, with a rain shower head, with a view. Doesn't get much better than that. Apart from maybe in the owner's cabin itself. And this is where that striking bow design really comes into its own. The wraparound 270 degree glass, the view out of here is amazing. The connection to your surroundings, which is such an important part of this project, you really do see it in here, it's fabulous. There's blinds and curtains, of course, so you can get some shade and some privacy, but what an amazing place to wake up to. Lying in bed, looking at that window, tremendous. And there's a TV here as well. So that pops up from here. If you want to watch some television in bed, as cabins go on this size of boat, it doesn't really get much better. 
two access points up to the top deck, up in the interior there, into the bridge, and then up through a hatch behind or up this staircase here, and that's really nice, easy access. And the beauty of this design is that this top deck stretches almost the entire length of the boat. And like downstairs, you've got that lovely mix between lounging space, sunbathing space, and then dining space as well. So back here, this is that sort of extension of the cockpit, these lovely arth-facing sofas that give you that all-important vista out over the back of the boat, more sunbathing space down here as well. Works very, very nicely. And then if we move forward, you've got wing stations on both sides so that the skipper can be here on either side of the boat, depending on which side they're going in, and they have control from the IPS joystick here. You may have three engines, but the beauty of IPS, it's all combined into one joystick. So that works very effectively and gives the skipper a good view on both sides. Moving forward, you have the dining area, nice big wet bar here with the grill, sink, storage and cooling space underneath, of course, and then this lovely table here under the shade of this amazing hardtop. I love this design. You've got these spurs here, you've got these connecting beams down here that connect to the top of the superstructure, and this fantastic glass house that really characterizes the look of this boat, certainly in profile. We've just got to get down and have a look at this helm station. It's absolutely awesome. I love the entrance way. It's real spaceship stuff down through this amazing glasswork and into the heart of the beast, the business end. And just look at this. You don't see many helm stations like this. First of all, the view is incredible. You're on a near 24 meter boat and you can see the bow is just there and you're so high up. You've got this beam running right down the middle, this huge piece of glass running up and over your head and dropping really deep forward, the tiny little carbon fiber Wally steering wheel, carbon fiber dash as well, the massive Simrad MFDs. It's a wonderful place to stand. And of course, we saw these on the Wally Power 58 that we shot in Miami. If you wanna watch that tour, I'll put a link above my head. But these seats don't get any less cool the more you see them, they are just fabulous. And it's a shame we can't drive it, but uh, just to stand here, it's a, it's a wonderful sensation. And of course, it's triple IPS, so you have a really nice, wide, efficient cruising band. It'll top out at 23. And of course, you have this, this big boat to handle, but you have it all under the command of a joystick. It really is pretty awesome up here. From here, let's go right down to the lower deck and look at the guest accommodation. There are a couple of layout options on the lower deck. You can either have two big double cabins or you can have three cabins, two doubles and a twin. This boat's got the latter, so you've got identical double cabins, one forward, one aft, and then adjacent to that, a twin. So we'll go into the twin first, heading amidships. It's a twin, but it's a really nice cabin, really good amount of floor space, good sized beds, even though they're singles. And I mentioned about wherever you are down here, you get natural light. Well, yeah, even here in the bowels of the boat in the twin cabin, there's a nice big window to draw all that natural light in. Television mounted up on the wall there. Every cabin's got a television. Every cabin's also got its own bathroom and it may not be as spectacular as the owner's suite, but they're still pretty good with a separate shower cubicle. Obviously the same fit and finish as elsewhere and headroom throughout is just great. Just take my word for it. Headroom is not an issue on this boat. We'll have a look at one of the double cabins as well, just to give you a, an insight. Again, nice cabin, beds running across the boat on this one. Again, TV mounted up there, double storage out over on that side. And I really like this effect here, this sort of suede headlining, and then the nice smooth curve as it transforms into the bedside table. Great lighting throughout as well. Mix of spots and subtle underlighting does work very nicely. And then of course, the bathroom, sliding partition door to save from space and like everywhere else. Headroom's great, separate shower cubicle. You know what I'm gonna say. Those are the sleeping space for the guests then. Let's head and see where the crew sleep. Here we are then, right forward on the lower deck, underneath the owner's cabin. This is where the crew area is on this boat. The downside of it being forward, obviously, is there is no connection to the machinery space from this area. The upside, though, is that because of the height of the bow, there's lots of hedging down there. And actually, for a sub-24 metre boat, although there's no crew mess to speak of, there's just sleeping space, the cabins are pretty good. They're identical, and they're sort of split either side of the bow. You've got a couple of bunks, and then bathrooms right forward with the storage as well. Of course, crew also have really easy access up to the galley from here. Let's head to the engine room. Here I am then, amongst a threesome of Volvo Penta IPS 1350s. They've just been running, hence why the engine fans are quite loud, so apologies for that. 
but hopefully you're getting a nice idea of the space down here. As you can see, certainly not standing headroom for someone of six feet tall, but it's easy enough to move around between the engines and get to all the major components like the generator, which is over on that side. We've got the sea keeper, big sea keeper mounted underneath this platform here. And yeah, you've got three engines to look after, but actually it's easy to get around all three of them. And crucially, they're pods. They're exposed, easy to check with your eye, and also it's easy to get through if you do need to work on them. Of course, you've got three engines and three pods to look after, but really what they're going for, A, is the packaging, of course, because these are so much further back in the boat than shaft drives would be, and the efficiency that comes with IPS. Thank you for watching that tour. If you enjoyed it, please give the video a like. If you want to see another Wally -E tour, we did the Wally -E Power 58 in Miami. You can watch that if you click up here. And if you'd like to subscribe to the Yacht Buyer YouTube channel,